Hey, I'm Sapphire. Wanna hear something scary? From cautionary tales about technology to creepy pastas that will keep you up at night, this next volume is all about the internet. For the next few chapters, I'll be sharing some of the eeriest stories that have emerged thanks to the World Wide Web. But don't worry your little heads, they're all fiction. They all claim to be fiction. Our first chapter comes from the No Sleep subreddit written by username ScarJo. Have you ever forgotten your phone? When did you realize you'd forgotten it? The realization probably didn't dawn on you spontaneously. More likely, you reached for your phone and were momentarily confused by it not being there. Then you did a mental restep of the morning's events. Shit. In my case, my phone's alarm woke me up as normal, but I realized the battery was lower than I expected. So I put it on the counter to charge it while I showered instead of into my bag like normal. It was a momentary slip from the routine, but that was all it took. Once in the shower, my brain got back into the routine it follows every morning, and that was it. Forgotten. Forgotten. This wasn't just me being clumsy, as I later researched. This is a recognized brain function. Your brain doesn't just work on one level, it works on many. Like when you're walking somewhere, you think about your destination and avoiding hazards, but you don't think about keeping your legs moving properly. I wasn't thinking about regulating my breathing. I was thinking whether I should grab a coffee on the drive to work. I wasn't thinking about moving my breakfast through my intestines. I was wondering whether I'd finish on time to pick up my daughter Emily from daycare after work or get stuck with another late fee. This is the thing. There's a level of your brain that just deals with the routine so that the rest of the brain can think about other things. Most people call it autopilot, but there's danger there. If you have a break in your routine, your ability to remember and account for the break is only as good as your ability to stop your brain going into routine mode. But I didn't stop my brain entering routine mode. I got in the shower as normal, routine started, exception forgotten, autopilot engaged. I showered, I shaved, the radio forecast amazing weather. I gave Emily her breakfast and loaded her into the car. She was so adorable that morning. She complained about the bad sun blinding her, saying it stopped her having a little sleep on the way to daycare. That was the routine. It didn't matter that my phone was on the counter, charging silently. My brain was in the routine, and in the routine my phone was in my bag. This is why I forgot my phone. Not clumsiness, not negligence, nothing more than my brain entering routine mode and overriding the exception. Autopilot engaged. I left for work. It's a swelteringly hot day already. The bad sun had been burning since before my traitorously absent phone woke me. The steering wheel was burning hot to the touch when I sat down. I heard Emily shift over behind my driver's seat to get out of the glare. But I got to work, submitted the report, attended the morning meeting. It's not until I took a quick coffee break and reached for my phone that the illusion shattered. I did a mental restep. I remembered the dying battery. I remembered plugging it into the wall. I remembered leaving it there. My phone was on the counter. Autopilot disengaged. Again, therein lies the danger. Until you have that moment, the moment you reach for your phone and shatter the illusion, that part of the brain is still in routine mode. The day continued to bake. The morning haze gave way to the relentless fever heat of the afternoon. People swapped coffees for ice smoothies, jackets discarded, sleeves rolled up, ties loosened, brows mopped. The park slowly filled with sunbathers and barbecues, window frames threatened to warp. The thermometer continued to swell. Thank fuck the offices were air conditioned. Still cursing myself for forgetting my phone, I drove home. The day's heat had baked the inside of the car, releasing a horrible smell from somewhere. When I arrived on the driveway, the stones crunching comfortingly under my tires, my wife greeted me at the door. Where's Emily? Fuck. As if the phone wasn't bad enough. After everything, I'd left Emily at the fucking daycare after all. I immediately sped back there and started practicing my excuses, wondering vainly if I could charm my way out of a late fee. I saw a piece of paper stuck to the door. Due to vandalism overnight, please use side door. Today only. Overnight? What? The door was fine this morning. I froze. My knees shook. Vandals. A change in the routine. My phone was on the counter. I hadn't been here this morning. My phone was on the counter. I'd driven past because I was drinking my coffee. I'd not dropped Emily off. My phone was on the counter. She'd moved her seat. I hadn't seen her in the mirror. My phone was on the counter. She'd fallen asleep out of the bad sun. 
She didn't speak when I drove past her daycare. My phone was on the counter. She changed the routine. My phone was on the counter. She changed the routine and I'd forgotten to drop her off. My phone was on the counter. Nine hours. That car. That baking sun. No air. No water. No power. No help. No help. That heat. A steering wheel too hot to touch. Mm -hmm. that, smell. that smell. I walked to the car door. Numb. Shock. I opened the door. My phone was on the counter and my daughter was dead. Autopilot disengaged. In our next chapter, I will be telling you a story written by Pascal Chatterjee about two friends who are messaging on WhatsApp. You asleep? No. Guess you're not either. Can't. It's the wind. Sounds like cats fighting. What's your excuse? Studying. So that's what they call porn now? Annie, what the fuck? I'm not denying it. I still can't believe what Johnny did today. Me neither. That boy has issues. What the fuck? The wind's so loud. That doesn't seem normal. No wind over here. Just rain. Lucky you. I need my beauty sleep. Damn right you do. What? You mean I look- Shit. I think I heard footsteps on the gravel outside. Get your crazy dad to check it out. I'm home alone. The fam are on holiday, remember? I told you this. Really? Till when? We should hang out. They really sound like footsteps, but there's something odd about them. I should look out the window, but my bed is so warm. Sure, you want to look out the window when you're alone? What if there really is someone there in your garden, looking up at you? Not funny, David. Wow, chill. I'm sure it's nothing. I'm gonna check. Be right back. If there's something strange in your neighborhood, who are you gonna call? David, there's someone in the garden. What, really? Yes, I can see a man's back. What's he doing? He's looking for something? On his hands and knees in the bushes. <laughs> he must be high. Probably looking for his drugs. David, this is serious. What should I do? Nothing. He'll probably go away by himself. Oh my god, now he's digging with his bare hands. He's ruining the garden! Shit, he's turning around. What does he look like? David, what the fuck? This isn't funny! What? How are you doing that? What are you talking about? I can see you in my garden. How are you writing here without touching your phone? Look up! I'm by the window, can't you hear me banging on it? Fuck, Annie, now you're scaring me too. I'm definitely not in your garden, that's not me. Stop playing around, I can see your face and you're wearing that stupid football jacket you're so proud of. It must be someone who looks like me. Honestly, Annie, I'm at home. I wouldn't play around like that. It has to be a friend of yours, David, playing a sick prank. How else could he be wearing your jacket? There are loads of jackets like that. My friends don't look anything like me. You just have me on your mind. He's digging again. Fucking leave already! Annie, do you have a gun in your house? Don't be stupid, David. I couldn't shoot anyone. You don't have to use it. Just show that you're carrying. Doesn't that jacket have your name on the back? Yeah, the team all got one with their name on. I can see your fucking name! What? What the hell is this, David? Annie, that jacket's in my closet. Fuck, he's seen me. Why is he smiling like that? He's coming. Call the cops! Annie? <laughs> Annie, pick up! I've called the cops, told them there's a break-in attempt at your place. They said they're on their way, but it'll take about half an hour. Annie, are you there? It's in the house. Can't talk. I have to be quiet. Lights off. I'm in a closet with a knife. Hard to type. Shaking too much. Hang in there, Annie. The police will be there in 20 minutes. Do you know where he is? It. Not he. The look it had when it saw me, David. No person could look like that. Jesus Christ. Does it know where you are? No. I grabbed the knife when I saw it running toward the house, and I got in the closet when I heard it breaking in. Okay, good. You'll be fine. A druggie doesn't have the brains to find someone hiding in the closet. The police will be there soon. Oh god, it's calling out to me. It doesn't sound like you, David. Its voice is so deep. Filling the house. Filling my head. What is it saying? Come out, Annie. I just want to look at you. It keeps repeating that over and over. Have I gone mad, David? Is this what it feels like? Just ten more minutes, Annie. Keep it together. You were so strong, you will get through this. It's coming up the stairs, but so... slowly. 
the regular steps. Why does it look like you, David? Why you? I don't know, Annie. Please believe me. Can you make it stop? Please make it stop? I would if I could, I promise you. It's at the end of the hall. David, I didn't say anything to my parents when they left. I was listening to music. Is that the last time I see them? Annie. This has something to do with you, David. Only you can make it stop. Think fast. I don't know, Annie. God, please. Please. It might be because I think about you so much. I think about you all the time. So stop. I don't know how. It's scraping something on the walls. Getting closer, please, David. I'm trying. I'm trying so hard. It's slowing down. Try harder. Whatever you're doing, it's working. It stopped. I can't hear anything. Really? Don't go out yet. Stay put till the police get there. What should I tell them if he's gone? Everything, Annie. Everything you told me. I didn't know you felt that way about me, David. I'm so glad it stopped. Can you come over in the morning, David? I really need to see you. Of course, Annie. I'll be there. Great. Can't wait. Annie? Annie, how do I know this is you? Google Earth is a pretty amazing website, but it can also lead to some strange discoveries. In our next chapter, I will be telling you a story that originates from creepypasta. A few years ago, I was in a car accident. Since then, I really don't leave the house that often. It's difficult, and the idea of seeing a car drive by makes me feel lightheaded. So my friend showed me Google Maps. I was fascinated by the fact that I could see all over the world, almost like being there. I became instantly hooked. I'd virtually walk down streets in China, Japan, Germany, England, so many places. The faces of the people were always blurred to protect their privacy, but it was still enjoyable to see them out there, enjoying their life, walking like it was no big deal. One day when I was looking around Tokyo, I spotted a woman wearing bright red sneakers, the same kind I was wearing. She must have good taste, I laughed. I zoomed in closer and noticed her black pants, her gray bag she carried over her black hooded jacket. She was walking in a relaxed manner, one hand trailing the wall beside her. I bet if I could have seen her face, she'd be smiling. I began to feel a little sad. I wish that I could be there, walking so carefree with her. That wouldn't happen though, until I died. I was stuck in this chair. I sighed and zoomed out of Tokyo. I turned off the computer and went to bed. I got up early and decided to look around Paris. I randomly zoomed to an area and saw a street lined with old brick buildings and a few small shops and an old tan brick church. I spun the view around a few more times and then saw something peculiar. Sitting on the bench at the bus stop were two people. One of them was a young woman with her feet stuck in front of her in a relaxed manner. She was wearing those same red sneakers. I was startled for a moment as I noticed the black pants and black hooded jacket. Her dark brown hair was tied loosely behind her head. A gray bag sat on the bench beside her. This is crazy, I thought. It can't possibly be the same woman. This is a different country, different continent even. How could it be her? This is stupid. It wasn't as if these were live photographs. They were taken ahead of time and then stored. It's not like she was in two places at once. She could just be a traveler. Besides, without seeing her face, it was impossible to tell it was the same person. Brown is a common hair color. Those red sneakers were something I purchased online. I'm sure a million other people did too. I shook my head and went to fix some lunch. When I got back online, I decided to look at Berlin. I picked a random street as usual. It looked pretty empty. There wasn't much to see at all, really. I was disappointed and moved my cursor to click away when something caught my eye. I turned the view and there they were. Those damn red sneakers. I stared in shock. How could she be there too? Even if she was traveling, there's no way I would find her every time. Even finding her in Paris would have been one heck of a coincidence, but this? This was crazy. Was this some kind of joke? Had Google decided to play a prank on its users that used their product so much? I did a quick search, looking for a note about a woman that shows up like Waldo. There was nothing. I looked through articles on strange things you can see on Google Maps, but none of them mentioned the woman that travels the world with you. Had my self-imposed isolation driven me mad? Had I become so lonely that I created a hallucination for myself? I sent a text message to a friend asking him to look at the locations. I asked him if he saw the same woman. Then I waited, hands sweating, heart thumping in my chest. I jumped when my phone beeped. I see the lady you're talking about.
about in Berlin. I didn't see her in Paris or Tokyo. Is this some kind of game or what? Are you okay? I didn't respond. Instead, returning to the locations in Tokyo and Paris. There she was. I shivered. Who was she? What was happening? I switched to Sydney, then London, Zurich, Hong Kong. She was everywhere I looked. In each picture, she came closer and closer to looking directly at me with her blurred out face. My heart felt like a terrified bird slamming around inside my chest. Who was she? Was she following me? Was I following her? I wish I could see the expression on her face, know what she saw when she looked back at me. I wanted to get out of the chair and run. Why is it that the only thing that made me feel free again was the thing that made me feel even more trapped? I typed in the name of my town and zoomed into a random street. It was a couple of miles from my house. The gates to the city park were shown in the clarity of daylight, despite it being night here. There she was. There she was. She was only a few miles from my house. She was near me and she was watching me. She was coming for me. What did she, she want? want? I typed in the name of the apartment complex where I live. I could see the outside of the building. The parking lot was full of cars and there were a few blurred out children in the playground. I searched everywhere for her. She wasn't in the parking lot or on the sidewalks, not hiding between the buildings or standing in the playground. I even scanned each of the cars behind the bushes and each of the blurred windows. She wasn't there. I curled tightly around myself and lay my head down on the desk. This place was safe. I didn't leave the apartment anyway. I would never use Google Maps again. I would never see her again. She could stay at the park for all I cared. I'm safe, mm -hmm. I said to myself in a whisper. I felt good to hear it out loud. I'm safe. A chill ran down my spine. I had a camera hooked to my computer that showed who was at the front door. As I went to turn on the security feed, I realized the last of Google's images that I'd seen had only shown the outside of the building, just the outside. I looked at the screen and saw a woman in black pants in a black hooded jacket and carrying a gray bag with a shoulder strap. Of course, there were those red sneakers. She looked directly at the camera, her face still a complete blur as she reached her hand out in front of her. That's when I heard the front door slowly open. Want something scary for your walls? We have a limited edition poster available for purchase. There's only 666, so get yours before they're gone. Like this video if it gave you the chills. And don't forget to subscribe to Snarled and check out our other videos. And if you dare to follow me, my links are in the description below. Until next time, sweet dreams.